Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of a playthrough with Alon Paul. Um, yeah, we're adjusting some audio and playing with some stuff today, so we're going to be uh, a little bit different. Hopefully the audio in the background is a little bit quieter. I've had some comments in regards, regards to that, both uh, online and in person. So I'm uh, going to see what this does for the game as we try to adjust certain things. Um, we're going to keep it a little bit lighter. We are going to play a regular playthrough today. I'm going to try to do this in like 30 minute sessions. Uh, that way we can get to know the game a little better. Now, I, of course, like I've said before, I've been playing the game for a long time. So this will just be a normal, ordinary playthrough to anybody who decides that they want to get a different opinion or a different view of how the game is played. Um, and I will make comments in regards to certain things as we go along. So, anyway, we're starting a new game today, obviously. Um, very simple. Most of this stuff's going to be self-explanatory. So as you're going through the game, you're going to be able to figure things out as well. So if you're new to everything, this will hopefully help you out. So obviously, starting a new game, lots of choices. Now, sooner or later, we'll have an expedition that it's going to come up. I suspect probably in the next couple of weeks this will be happening. But I'm not going to hold my breath. Um, we have different styles of gameplay to choose from along, along the borders here. We have the normal mode, which is what we're going to do today. You have a relaxed mode. Just pay attention to what it says at the bottom um, to give you a better idea what the game is about. This makes it very relaxed. You still have a lot of things that you can and can't do. Um, uh, things that would normally cost you a lot won't cost you anywhere near as much. You have a creative mode. As it says, no damage, no limits, no costs. Everything's free. You have access to everything. Um, when I first started playing the game, I played creative mode and was completely lost. I had no idea what this game was about. And it wasn't until someone told me, hey, play normal mode. That's where you learn how to play the game. I'm like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Um, you do have a custom mode. Um, you'll see on my last video, I did a custom mode which was completely and utterly permadeath the whole way. Um, won't get into that. I'm not going to discuss it other than feel free to experiment as you will. Um, and then, of course, you have survival mode, which is kind of in between normal and the most extreme permadeath modes. It gives you, as it says here, more hazards, uh, smaller inventory, and increased costs. So it it hurts a little bit to play it, but still a lot of fun. But for the story mode line, we're going to go ahead and do normal mode. And here we go, ladies and gentlemen. Another edition of... Yeah, I don't need to say it. I'm loving the music of the background. I feel like I've just walked into a cathedral. I don't know, just me. But it just feels like you're in the presence of greatness. And you're not. Trust me. Um, just little old me. But all honor to the game. Um, I've had reported, I have reported some bugs lately to uh, the developers over Zendesk. But I went ahead and I also sent them a nice message and said, Hey, really appreciate what you guys have been doing with the game. Keep up the good work. Um, coming from a customer service background, not too many people reach out to say things like that. Um, it's few and far, be far between when you get good news from people to say, hey, just wanted to tell you hi and thanks for all that you do. So, hey, thanks somebody one of these days for what they've done. Makes you feel good too. So here we go. We start the game and unlike some of the other games that you play, you have to initialize it. Now in this case, I'm playing on PC. So, rather than playing with a regular ordinary controller, like on an Xbox, a PlayStation, which I do have an actual controller I could hook up, I'm not going to. I always play on PC. I'm old school like that. So, here we go. And I'll keep quiet while it talks. Toxic. Once again, we're starting on a toxic planet. Always look around. Watch the scenery. Look for stuff that you can use right up front. Okay, my, pul my propulsion unit's online. As you can see, it's at the bottom right corner. Now you'll start in this first person view and it's going to bounce out the third person. I prefer third person myself. Because I get to pull back and I get to see where I'm actually stepping. 
So you got a few things you're looking at here. The bottom left corner you got information that's going to pop up on occasion to tell you what's going on. In this case it reverts to this default setting. So at the bottom left I'm looking at my toxic protection at the top which it just warned you about. Toxic detection is dropping. This is giving me uh, also an alert on the right hand side telling me what my next step is, what I want to do, and tells me how to do it, which is great. Below the toxic protection on the left is your heart monitor. This is your health, as we commonly know. But you also are given, at the beginning, three lives as well. So once that bar hits zero, you lose a life, and then you lose another life. It doesn't drop again, you, you simply start losing lives. So it gives you a little bit more of a chance. So I'm gonna look around here. Now, one thing it tells me to do is do a scan. Uh, I can't do that because my scan is critically damaged and it tells me what I need to repair it. Ferrite dust. So I hit the right clicker once, it's telling me to get ferrite, ferrite dust. So I hit the right clicker again. As I look at items, I'll notice that some of these items have ferrite dust. I'd love to analyze them, but I can't right now because, well, that's what's wrong. It's something broken and I can't fix it. So let's get the ferrite dust. We use our multi-tool with the left mouse button to get it. And we're getting a little bit at a time from these little rocks, but it's enough in this mode to get enough. So we got 40. Should have climbed over 50 there, almost. 49, 57, 59. We're in the 60s. We're almost there. 74, go figure, right? And there it is, 75. So now it tells me we can repair it. Right click. We're going to hit the tab button now on the keyboard, and that's going to get us to this menu. It immediately pulls up your multi tool. So we have Exosuit, Starship, Multi-Tool. Let's just focus on this for now. We'll go over the rest later. To repair it, we add the, the dust. Now we could right-click and get out, but it's going to kick us out anyway. So now it tells us to scan again to locate sodium. Why do we need the sodium? Well, we use the sodium to recharge our, our uh, toxic protection that we've got on there, our shield, if you will. So we're going to hit the right clicker. We'll hit C now. And you notice that it pulls up with H for dihydrogen. NA is your sodium. Uh, you remember that uh, periodic table of elements, ladies and gentlemen? Yeah, you're going to need it here. We also have some oxygen. We're going to need that too. So I'm going to gather up everything I can. We have a lot of sodium around here, and I will go ahead and get it. I'm going to get the dihydrogen. We will need it later, and I'll explain that, but it's good for developing certain things. Now, you notice that the, char that the scanner has already charged up in this mode. In tougher modes, it takes longer to charge. So remember that there was a sodium plant over here someplace. Let's go see if we can find that. It's yellow and you'll see it glows a little bit. Easy to find at night. So let's pick that up but guess what? We got lucky. We found three plants. Awesome! So now that we got the sodium we're gonna recharge it like it says. How do we do that? Um, it will tell us to do that with the quick menu. We hit the X and it immediately pulls up recharge equipment. That's where it always starts. We're going to go ahead and choose our hazard protection, and it tells us it takes 29 sodium to charge it. So we'll use 29 of the 40 that we were to gather, and we get the special music to tell us that we did the right thing. We've completed a task. So now it tells us what's next. Now it's telling us that there's a starship nearby. This is going to be the starship it was talking about. Looks like it's 479 units away. Now, rather than using clicks, miles, or anything like that, it always uses units for everything. Uh, money, same thing, units. So that's what it uses as a default setting in this game. Now we got some animals floating around here. We got birds or other flying creatures flying around. I'd love to take a look at them, but I have no analysis visor. One thing I always advise doing at the very beginning, get your analysis advisor. Let's go ahead and put it in. I'm not going to reorganize things, which is going to drive people nuts. But we're going to go ahead and install this. We click on one of the empty spots. It tells us what we can install. We can get this, a bolt caster, or a shield. I'm going to go ahead and go with the analysis visor. We really need it. But see, it's not going to work because we need a carbon nanotube. How do we make those? Well, let's get out of this. Now, if we go back in here, you'll notice we have different menus. I can't build or add things in these menus. I can go to the exosuit, however, which has a technology menu and a cargo menu. Everything you want to build or produce or craft, as it calls it, it can be built in the cargo menu. So we choose this, and we need to build a carbon nanotube. It's grayed out because we can't build it. Why? Obviously, we don't have any carbon. So let's go find some, shall we? So we're going to look around, and we're going to look at any items that have carbon. This little round rock-looking thing is actually a plant, and it's carbon. We don't get much from it. 
as you can see. But if you look closely at a lot of different items that give carbon, I'll go ahead and get these while I'm here just because I'll need at least 30. But if you look at some of the plants, the things that you can actually shoot with your mining beam are going to register like this. Whereas things that don't, you can see like these plants right here, they don't. It's picking up the ferrite dust behind it. But you see this plant doesn't do anything. So when I land on planets like this or I'm present on a planet like this, I look around because there's normally, besides these little rocks, rock looking things that are actually plants, they usually have another type of plant that actually gives you more. Again, I'm getting some dihydrogen crystals because we need it. You'll notice that my mining beam is also going down. We're going to need carbon for that as well. So we don't want to go too, too crazy. The, the line that also appears is how hot it's getting. It's a thermal sensor, if you will. And as it gets hotter, it mines quicker and more efficiently, but it can overheat. So you got to be careful. So we're looking at these plants. None of them are giving us carbon. So there's got to be a plant around here that will give us more carbon, but we'll find that later, most likely. Um, I see what looks like a very interesting looking plant here. No, no carbon. So I'm going to go ahead and take this. You'll find other plants here. This one is pulpy roots. I'm going to gather it. That gives us food of a source. What does this food do? This one will give us 10, plus 10% 10 to our hazard protection as a good recharge. So excellent to use in place of sodium when you can't find sodium. Gather up those plants at the very beginning early game. As you get later in the game, you won't need it as much. Right, let's get some more carbon. Do we have enough to make one? Let's see, 70? Yep, we just needed 50. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to make that. We're going to add it in, and now we have an analysis visor. What is this going to give us? Ah, you're going to love this part. So let's go up here. Remember, there were some animals walking around. Creatures, let's call them. There's one right there. So if we hit the F button, we get to analysis mode. Anything with a red dot is a creature of some sort and can be analyzed. So we analyze this creature and it gives us money and tells us the behavior of the creature. This one's peaceful. That's great. The ones you want to be aware of are the ones that are angry creatures. But we want to try to find as many as we can. Now look at the right hand side at the bottom right. It's going to tell us how many we've found. Two of seven creatures. That's important. If you can find all seven, you get what's called a nanite bonus that you can get from the planet. And for finding all the creatures, you also get an achievement for this. By getting that achievement and getting those extra nanites, and we can zoom in with the right clicker here. By getting that achievement, getting all those extra nanites can help us get upgrades. So it looks like we've found, what, five creatures now? Yes, it is. So I've only got two more creatures to go. Now let's hit that escape button this time. Escape gives us several menus. Now what it does is it also pauses the game. You don't move as quickly. In the, the game will still progress as far as daytime, nighttime is concerned, but it also gives you a chance to really pause things. Now the discovery we just made are these five creatures. There's a couple different things we can do here. If we complete it, we get 1,750 nanites. That's really, really good. So you have units up here, which is your money. Nanites, which help you with upgrades and things that you can purchase. You also have Quicksilver, but we'll get to that later. You get that from the anomaly and for certain missions. So anyway, um, we have five different creatures we've discovered, and it tells us that there's two more. They're both rare, and they're both underground. So there's no water on this planet. We don't have any underwater creatures. So we're going to find these in a, in, a, in a cave of some sort. And I guarantee you we'll find one pretty quick. The other one's going to be kind of tough. It'll prove me wrong, of course. You can also see in the background the planet that you're on. It tells you where on the planet you're located. So if you want to head north or south, you know about where you are in, in relation to the planet. So, good to know. If I right-click from here, it pulls me back one step and tells me how many flora, how many fauna, how many minerals. Plants, animals and creatures, rocks. And it also tells you what the name of the planet is. And guess what? If you've only just discovered it and you're the first person to discover it, you can rename it anything you want. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's just give it a name. I'm going to name it Bob. Will it work? I don't know. But that gets uploaded to the online discovery services. And as long as you're online, it'll be submitted. And one day it may just change its permanent name to 
to Bob. Planet Bob, yes. Now, a couple different things we also know. If I right click again, I get pulled back to the actual system. It tells me that there are, obviously, six planets in the system. We don't know what the others yet because we haven't discovered. We can sit on this planet, stare at them until our heart's content. We will not discover these planets until we scan them from space or land on them. So, we won't worry about that. If we right click again, it just kicks us back out of that menu. Now you notice that not much has progressed in regards to my toxicity and my health. One more time, just to go through this. You have a catalog. In the catalog, it tells you many different things. We will get to these later as we progress. But it tells you a lot of the different things that you're moving along through the catalog. And you, just, you can discover minerals and such, and it can tell you where to find it. So I can set up that I want to find some carbon, and it'll show me where it's located. If there's a planet or something like that, that might can contain it. Um, and you can go through the different kind of catalogs. In the log, it tells you what your current missions are. We only have one right now, which is Awakenings. It tells us a little bit more information, tells us what our objectives are. This is telling us that we need to investigate our surroundings and find the crash site. Finally, you have options, and these are all your general options. Now, for the purpose of this, I'm going to go to Network, and I'm going to disable Multiplayer for now. It makes the processor work a little less hard, um, as far as the graphics processing and everything like that is concerned. Uh, also gives me a chance to just work on this without having to find uh, other people popping in. And, uh, well, it could cause cheating to occur. And as much as I love giving items to another person or person giving me items, really don't think that's a good idea. Now, one thing you can do in your menu is go through this when you get a chance when you first get on. Anyone can join my group. That's fine. Voice chat is enabled. Text chat, fine. Allow PvP if I want to disable that. Because that means people can shoot at you with their ship or if they land on the planet with whatever weapon they're currently carrying. Can they add base parts? I really don't want people messing with my base. I will allow them to do so, but deleting base parts, I restrict to groups and friends. I'm gonna actually going to make that friends only. Uh, ship marker, that's fine. Uh, on foot marker, that's fine. I don't mind anybody finding me. Can they edit the base terrain? I'm going to also switch that to friends only. Speech to text and translate text. I do want translation on as long as it can translate from, from one language to English. That's perfectly fine by me. You can also see what your current groups are. You can leave a group if someone groups up with you and you weren't intending to do so. You can also check out who your friends are. You'll notice that I do have Jason Plays in here, and I've also got Tangent, Captain Richard, and a couple other uh, personal friends as well. And then you can view nearby players if you wish. We're going to get out of that menu. you get general options as well, where you can adjust all the settings and volumes and stuff. you notice mine's turned all the way down, because, uh, well, you know, it's a little bit too loud in game sometimes. And you can adjust default settings in regards to what you prefer. You'll notice that there's an auto torch in here. Usually when it gets nighttime, you get into a cave, the torch automatically comes on, the, the, the flashlight, it drives me nuts. Sometimes it throws me off when I'm running along a planet and I'm trying to find something, and I, the torch is on, and it just kind of gives me a little bit of flash blindness going on. I'd rather have full control over that. On your keyboard, the letter T will enable and disable your torch. So you can turn your flashlight off and on whenever you wish. Um, I leave everything else pretty much the same at this point. You've got some graphics options to adjust your graphics network we just touched on. You do have video options, so between video and graphic they're a little bit different. They're a little bit different settings too. So if you're finding you're struggling or you're finding your game is locking up on you, please go into here and make some adjustments. You may have to drop some settings down a little bit. Difficulty settings, you can go into difficulty and change it. It's up to you. I'm not going to change mine. And then there's your save points. They now have an auto save that does it for you. So every few minutes it saves for you so you don't lose your progress. In the past, it used to be you had to jump in and out of a ship or find a save point. Don't have to worry about that as much anymore. And you can rename it. I am going to rename this as, uh, let's see, we're going to call this uh, Recorded uh, Playthrough. Did I even spell that right? No. There we go. Recorded Playthrough. And it goes into the difficulty settings, but I'm not going to change any. Okay, we're going to leave that alone. Again, if you want to know more about that, I have that in my other video. The video right before this. So let's go ahead and get out of here. Look, it's nighttime, but you notice my toxicity hasn't dropped anymore. Pretty cool, huh? So yes, it does pause the game. We'll get into some more of this later on. Um, I do need some more carbon. I'm going to gather some more as I go. Um... Yeah, I could use some ferrite dust too, because we're going to need that later on, so I'll gather what I can. But I don't want to spend too much time doing this. We do need to get to our ship. 
I do want to end with the repair of the ship today. We've been playing now for about 20 minutes or so, so I want to do get this going. My weapon charge is depleted. See, that's why I needed carbon. Fortunately, I need 80 carbon to charge all the way, and I've only got 30, so I'll get a little bit. But you know what? We're just going to go ahead and gather up whatever we can. Now, as you see depressions in the land, and I don't mean people who are depressed, as you see depressions in the land, you're going to find that they might be caves. Those are very, very handy. Like this one here may not be one. Yeah, I didn't think so. It started to be one, but the procedurally generated uh, landscape did not give it to us all the way. But I see something in the distance here. Remember what I said about the uh, sodium plants? Sodium plants put off a glow. Certain other plants do too, so you can find them in the dark. Hey, buddy. Ah, he's running like crazy. Okay. I'm going to go over here. Oh, there's all kinds of stuff over here I really could use. Let's gather up all these dihydrogen crystals again. I'll show you the usefulness behind those. Almost everything you can gather up is useful to you. You won't be able to gather everything. You notice my beam is getting red. It's overheating. But I can pick things up quicker when I do that. Try to keep it at the high end, and you'll pick up stuff a lot quicker. All right. I think we're doing pretty good. Let's get the sodium while we're here. Sodium is useful for also other things, too, and they can be combined with other elements as you go. Um, let's stop here for a second. What this is is a memory of the Viking. You'll find these little uh, pillars all over the planets. First time you hit it on a planet with a new cr new culture you've never experienced, it will give you a word in that language. And usually, the knowledge that you get is going to be the name of the creatures that, or probably the name of the civilization that's in this system. In this case, it's the Viking. So gather these as you go. Again, you get certain achievements for this. Let's get some more carbon. Now, again, one thing you are going to need is oxygen. I mentioned that earlier. Oxygen helps recharge your health. And these creatures right here, along with some red plants, will give you oxygen. Now before I hit that, I see some red uh, carbon crystals here. This is different from regular carbon. It's condensed, if you will, is what it is. And actually that's the name of it, condensed carbon. And it's very, very handy. In the smaller form, it can recharge quicker. So mining beam, now we have the option to use condensed carbon if we wish. We're going to use that because it charges quicker. And now I got 100%. As you can see, 100 at the top right. You will find caches laying all over the place. In this case, it's a damaged container. Now I do need ferrite. Rusted metal is going to come in handy. Some people will just go ahead and eliminate it. If you hold down your center mouse button, you can delete it if you wish. Or you can right click it, pick it up, and drop it into an inventory slot. You get what's ever in the case. In this case, it's dihydrogen. Usually just a few pieces. Um, here is another red canister that you can pick up. It usually contains carbon, sodium, oxygen, and other items. Finally, there's the yellow canisters, which will give you another item. In this case, sodium nitrate. Again, it's a condensed form of sodium. Very handy to have as well. So these creatures, they are toxic to us. They are an unidentified plant. It's hazardous flora, as you can see when I'm looking at it. Okay, but it gives oxygen, and every time it explodes, it spews the stuff. If you're too close, it'll injure you, but these little red pods on it, you can gather. I'm not going to stand next to it because it's going to hurt me, but it's got three pods. There we go, and I got, look at that, 81 oxygen, and if I take the creature, it gives me more, an additional 14. So you get more oxygen from the pods than you do from the creature uh, cre creature itself, so keep that in mind. These blue plants are deuterium. They will give your uh, jetpack a boost. Where you don't use jetpack fuel, you'll just use the boost for a limited time. Very handy to use when you're searching landscapes. Gather up everything you can. You're going to need it. And look what we found. We found our ship. Now, another thing to note is you got ships flying over. Now this is something I've proved time and time again. I proved it in my last video and I proved it time and time again. Whichever way they're flying, they're heading from one trading outpost to another. 
Now, I don't know how far that trading outpost is, but if they turn rather than going straight up in the air, that means the trading outpost is in that direction. So instead of going straight that way, see they're all turning left, trading outpost is most likely to the left instead. That's very handy to know if you're in a no starter ship challenge. Now, here we are, we've made it. Um, what I'm gonna do is gather up some resources real quick. Always check out damaged machinery. It's very handy, don't get the crap that's on there. It's useless to you. But it'll give you nanites, in this case, give me 29, or it can give you an upgrade for your exosuit or your um, multi-tool. Mostly, it's your exosuit. I got condensed carbon, let's gather up all the materials. Got some oxygen, let's get some more of that, and I'll show you what we'll do with that later. And we got even more oxygen from there. So we gathered up all the resources from here. There's also always going to be, at your starter ship, four oxygen plants. Gather them. There we go. And then go ahead and hit your iteration here. Really cool graphics. Iteration, boundary separation failure likely. Vessel, 16, emptied, cause, sentinel intervention, deliberate transfer. Analysis, fresh iteration generated, anomaly containment prepared. Do we broadcast or leave? I'm gonna broadcast. Broadcast received, traveler anomaly de detected. Anomaly is compliant, position logged, system integrity scan initialized. And you're done with the, with the starter challenge. So what we do here, you see we're still dropping on our thermal, uh, pardon me, our toxic protection. There seems to be something in the ground. These are known as buried technology, but we don't have the gear to get it yet. Occasionally you'll find one above ground. That is what we call unburied technology as a joke, but it's few and far between that you'll run across those. Now I don't see, oh, I do have some caves over here. So before I jump in the ship and get things going, let me show you the, the good part about caves. And it's not real caves, is it? Oh, nope, it is, good. The good thing about a cave is as you go further in, watch my toxic protection. See? Stabilizing. And look, as predicted, there are creatures down here, but they're not cave creatures. Those are regular ones. You look around real quick, do a quick 360, see if you see any red dots anywhere. They can sometimes be floating around the outside edges of the cave, but I don't see any. I'm not going to worry about that right now. What do you find in caves? You find these little pillars right here of cobalt. Now I'm also, since it has a secondary element, I'm going to go ahead and scan it because I want to know what that element is. Dihydrogen very handy. It's very common to find that. Some of these may not always be cobalt, but cobalt is very handy to make certain things. I'm going to go ahead and get some. I'm going to mine those real quick, and then we'll show you what we'll make with it. Now, you'll get geodes out of some of these on occasion, and I'll show you what those are about here in a second. The marrow bulbs are handy. If you uh, refine those, you can get some... Um, sodium out of them, but you don't get enough to really make it worth your while, so I'm going to go ahead and get rid of it. Now, geodes are a... It says valuable lump of rock. Yes, they can cost a lot of money. You can get some good units from it, but one thing you can also do is analyze it, and it will turn into whatever you were gathering, like cobalt. Sometimes it'll turn into an element, a different element as well. Oh, see, I got ionized cobalt out of that, which is more expensive than regular cobalt. 76 units, 162 units each, see? And it sometimes gives me more cobalt for that. What can I do with the cobalt? Well, I can develop something called a battery made from cobalt and ferrite dust. Battery helps recharge your shield better than sodium. I'm going to make a few of these. At the beginning of the game, I like to make... I get one, but I like to make... If you highlight over it and hold your E button down, you'll get more. I like to make at least five. If I have enough resources to do so, I will get up to ten, but I can get nine here. See, I'm a little bit short, and it tells you you need three more cobalt. So I will get more. While you're in these caves, you do have to be careful. There are these hazardous fauna, fauna here. What do they do? This one is oxygen and sodium as their primary elements. So if I take one out, I'll get oxygen from this one. And the one behind it has oxygen as well. That's good. You don't get a lot, but it's good to get rid of it because as you're walking through, it can poison you, and which hurts. So let's get some more cobalt. I just need some extra. I like to keep about at least 100 on me so I can make 10 batteries when I need to. You'll notice that this one's different. 
it carries platinum instead of dihydrogen. Uh, I'm just, pardon me, instead of cobalt. Platinum is actually one of the more expensive metals. I will go ahead and gather that, but it'll also be the first one to go if I can gather something that's a little bit more uh, pricey. So let's get the cobalt. Now you'll notice that behind this cobalt on the right there, you'll see that there's a couple of those hazardous plants. If you look at them, they're going to start spewing. You see, it went red, shrunk down, and it's starting to spew, but I'm not close enough to be affected. But I am going to take them out because they're in my way and they're going to hurt me. There we go. A little more cobalt. How much does that give us now? 139. Very good. Okay, now there's also some at the ceiling. They have a secondary element too. That's usually rare. Usually one does and one doesn't. <gasps> These give silver. Silver is a handy element, but they're not as valuable as they used to be. But I'll go ahead and gather it anyway for the sake of argument. Okay. Very interesting tunnel structure here. It looks like the above world tried to grow down here as well. You find that occasionally with procedurally generated areas. This is a pretty cool place, actually. I love the cave sounds, the trickles of water and everything like that. It's really cool. So, but you recover in here. You notice that my toxic protection is dropping, but I don't have access to the upper world, so it's really, really odd that that would be happening. Now, some things, other things you'll find in caves are subterranean relics. They're not a lot of money, but you can gather a whole bunch of them, and I'll show them to you in just a moment. But you can stack up to 10 at a time, and they're worth about 5,000 units each, but for early game, it's a good idea to gra grab some of these while you can. You can see that silver is about 186 units each. Platinum is at 500 each, so silver will be the next one to go. Again, I see some plants in here. I'm going to gather them. And here's more cave. As you can see, it actually looks like cave. Smells like cave. Tastes like cave. I can't gack that up. Ah, hate that. Just run out. And we're going to get jade peas out of this one. What do they do for us? Let's see. 5% life support. So you see my life support is at 74 right now. If I eat one, 79, 84, 89, 94, 99. I'm just going to consume the last one even though it really doesn't do much for me. So, my life support is fully recharged, and I don't have to add oxygen now. That, like I said, is very handy to do. So, there's a quite little neat cave system it's got going on here. I like this. Anyway, let's go ahead and exit. It looks like that's where we came in, so... Oh, is that sodium? No, it's just a plant, cave marrow. Sorry, my bad. There's our entrance. Now... Your jetpack works like that. If you hit your space bar, you'll get a little bust, uh, boost out of it. If you hold it down, you'll go longer, of course, but you'll see your jetpack drops quickly. There we go. But if you do a thrust, this is a attack that you're doing here. Very handy. So if you run out of carbon and you can't get this from here, you can attack it. I have to get a little closer, apparently. You see? and you can gather carbon on your own. It's an alternative way. So if you ever run out and you think, oh, I'm screwed, you're not really screwed. Everything's okay. So let's go ahead and get our ship repaired and then we're gonna call it a night since we have already gone the half hour requirement. Iteration, online, Atlas connection intermittent, launch thrusters, offline, pulse engine, offline. I find myself alone on a strange world, unequipped and in danger. I have no memory of how I got here, no sense of a before. But this ship at least seems to recognize me. The controls react to my touch, or at least to that of my exosuit. I'm not dead yet, and this ship is a lifeline out to the stars. Let's read the log. Log 4925A, unavailable. Substituting data. Data? Exosuit connected. Suggestion, pilot should perform maintenance. Select desired repair path. Uh, let's see. I think I'll choose repair ship systems. Self-guided repair protocols. Initiated. Tells me that the pulse engine's critically damaged. It needs a hermetic seal and metal plating. Return. 
Let's go ahead and it tells me at the bottom right to press E to exit your ship. I'm exiting. Then it gives us the next option. Watch the bottom right. There we go. We gotta repair the pulse engines. First thing it tells us to do is do metal plating. Well, how do we get that? That's crafted substances, as it says at the top right. So let's hit our tab button. We're gonna choose a blank and take a look. It looks like we can do metal plating with 50 ferrite dust. Good thing I gathered some, right? So we make one. Then we go to our starship, and guess what? Now we can repair it with the metal plating. We still need the hermetic seal, but we're gonna learn about that in a second. Watch. Starship repair, partially complete. Board the starship and consult ship diagnostics. Let's go ahead and do that. So this one's gonna run over. Iteration, yeah, I'm not repeating that. Functional. Starship critically damaged. Vital ingredients missing. Unable to synthesize required components. Pulse engine requires hermetic seal. Request assistance. Here's the music. We've started another one. Recommendation. Iteration comparison reveals hermetic seal nearby. Salvage planetary chart from the stress beacon cache. Okay. So it's telling me to repair that. Hermetic seal, right? Need that. And we gotta exit. And we gotta search the crash site. Well, guess what? It tells us exactly where we need to go to look for it. Hey. Let's check this out. Love the graphics. They did a great job on that. Okay, up here inside the beacon's housing, as well as its distress broadcast unit, it contains a planetary chart. I guess we'll take that. So let's check our inventory, shall we? Look, we have a chart. What do we do? Hit E to plot the route. Route, route. Does a pullback. And you'll notice there's a red icon on the left. This is where we're going to be headed next. And there it is. So we need to head for that little spot over there. It's not far, 882. But this starts a series of events. We're going to go ahead and complete this. Like I said, we're going to get to the point where we repair the ship, and then we're going to pause there. As we go, we'll pick up items on the way. But like I said, it starts a series of events. One of those events is it'll kick in a storm here shortly as we get closer to our objective. It'll be a toxic storm nasty stuff. So we're going to keep going over here. We'll keep walking. You'll notice that the icons at the top move. You see that that's south. It tells us where we're going, but it also says that there's a plant nearby. Let's grab that. Okay. Now we're running. If I hit, the, if I walk, that's fine. We're going to get there at a slower pace. If I hit my shift button or just tap it, it's going to allow me to run. But you're using up run energy. We can also do a thrust. So remember that attack I was telling you about like that? You see I'm all worn out now. Gotta get halfway before it re 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 recuper uh, recuperates. Yeah, I guess the right word. Recovers. If we do the thrust at the same time that we hit our jet pack, we can actually go short distance real quick, real quickly in short bursts. Like that. Run. Short burst. But you have to wait for your jet pack to recharge. It's very handy. Remember that I told you about the ships? Let's take a look. See, they're going up and to the right. So last time they went that way and to the left. This one's going up and to the right, so the trade center is that way. Problem is, we don't know how far away it is. But we'll check that theory later. Now, you'll notice at the bottom left, my toxic protection is dropping really fast. And it says I'm in a storm right now. Okay? So we need to either get where we're going quickly or have the items on us to be able to recharge our shield when necessary. So we're going to do a little quicker because we don't really have far to go. By the way, if you go too high with your jetpack, you can hurt yourself. I'll demonstrate that here in just a second. If you go too high and you run out, you see, I'm injured. Top left shows that I got injured. So we got some things we can get here. We're finally at our destination. It points to this particular spot. If we go inside, we are stabilizing. But there's something on the wall here. A hollow archive. Hollow archive. Accessing archive. Six of seven logs corrupted. Entry 4924A follows. No one. Bzz. Making this recording in case. Bzz. Leaving behind bzz. in the fabricator. Bzz might be of some use. So obviously these 
KZZKs that are thrown in here. I'm supposed to indicate that certain messages have been corrupted? Question mark? Or if they've been purposely deleted? Interesting. You decide later on. Bzz, eyes are damaged. Bzz, can't find ship. Recover supplies. The log finishes and the machine words to life, spitting out supplies. I have the hermetic seal I need to repair my ship. Whoever it was that led me here, whoever left this message, perhaps they found themselves in the same situation as I do now? So I have a hermetic seal, as it says at the top right. Located. Okay. So we've recharged everything on our body. Let's head over to the, over here. So before we leave this area, we have some damaged machinery. And we've just been told that the storm is clearing, too. We don't want feces. If you haven't figured that out, it's poop. Animal poop. What do we get? More nanites. In here, we always check the other one because there might be something in here. Sometimes they have things on the wall you can access, but these appeared empty. Now, if this is the way it looks in here, every single site that we come across on this planet will look exactly like that. Indeed, actually, it's probably the entire system. So, where's our ship? So it says, use the analysis visor, F, to locate your starship at the bottom right. So we're going to do that. Obviously, we know where it is, right? Now, if you do this and you hold down your left mouse button, pardon me, it's not letting me do it because it's already highlighted. I'm going to scan that rock because it's in the way. For instance, if I go to this ammonia deposit, I can hold E to tag it, or go back to the ship, and I should be able to highlight it as well. The thing is that since it's become part of the main storyline to find your starship, you can't highlight it right now, but you'll be able to do it later whenever you're looking for your starship. Single ship. Ignore it. So we're going to head back in the normal fashion. See, doing it in bursts like that can sometimes get you even further. Just a little bit of a piece of advice there. I wore myself out. There are caves all over the place, so keep an eye open for them. You can get more items from them when you need to. I'm going to gather some more oxygen while I'm here. Again, very handy substance to have. I do that in bursts like that because it tends to get me what I need quicker. Look, I'm going to get hurt. Up. There we go. Got a good amount of oxygen from that guy. Okay, there's my ship. Went the wrong way. Oh, got some condensed carbon over here. Now, the very large condensed carbons, this one is still small enough. You won't be able to gather without the proper upgrade to your mining equipment. But I got enough to get me 37. And we'll pick up some sodium while we're here because it's very handy to have. Now, in later episodes, I'm going to start introducing just regular music to my broadcast. Because I like to have some background music other than the regular game music. But for now, we'll keep with the game music just to give you the full immersement of the game. That was kind of creepy. Huh. See, there are the ships again, right? Let's watch them. There they go. Oh, the one on the right looks pretty neat. Which way? I think they're going to go... Hmm. To the left. There they go. So it's over this way someplace. Very good. Now, if you see them start to circle, that means they found a landing platform, and they're circling the platform to find a landing spot. That is really good. Why is that good? Because you can get ships there, you can trade with the other pilots, the NPC pilots that are that are off the ships. Um, they have a trading uh, terminal in there, so you can sell some of the stuff that you've gathered in your inventory along the way. Okay, so let's get this ship repaired. I'm going to get on board to save some of the uh, toxic protection tab. We're going to add that hermetic seal now. It is now repaired. Guess what? We've, we've achieved that. Now, what we need here is we need on our launch thruster some dihydrogen jelly and pure ferrite. Here's the weird part. It says to repair launch thrusters using dihydrogen jelly. Where did we get that from? Well, normally you get it from dihydrogen, and you can create it in your inventory by selecting it. But apparently one of the uh, boxes I found on the landscape had a dihydrogen jelly in it. So I got one. Hence the reason why you want to do that. 
So let's go ahead and repair it with the dihydrogen jelly. We still need pure ferrite. Let's see what we need to do next. It'll kick me out. Okay, we need to repair the thrusters with the pure ferrite. It tells us to exit the ship. Okay, what's next? Now it tells us to produce a refining unit. Now, some of the buttons we've used so far, X, the tab, the escape, now we're using Z. So it says to use tab to access your inventory. Let's do that first, because we need a metal plate in order to build it. So we're going to make one metal plate, which we happen to have enough ferrite dust to do. Now we're down to 40, so we can't really produce anything else. But you remember I mentioned gathering up this rusted metal? So we're going to build it with Z, the portable refiner, which requires one metal plate and oxygen. Good thing we got that, right? We right click and we can put it anywhere we want. We can't put it next to the ship. It gives us red and tells us we won't do that. If you're on somebody else's base, it'll also give you that option that you can't put it there. So we put it down. There it is. Hit the center button to pick it up when you want to. E to get in, but we need fuel. What fuel do we need? Let's right click and it tells us we need carbon or condensed carbon. It tells us the maximum amounts we can use. I've only got 80 carbon right now, so I don't want to use it, but I'll use the condensed carbon. Whatever we don't use will be come back to us as regular carbon. Little trick there. Keep that in the back of your mind. Now before I make pure ferrite, it's a one to one ratio from ferrite dust to pure ferrite, but I've only got 40 and I need 50. So before I get started, I'm gonna go ahead and take the rusted metal which is going to give us ferrite dust. And you notice that 232 is an output of 1 to 2, 464 ferrite. It's going to take a little bit. Let's go ahead and get it started, though. You don't have to sit there and stare at it. You can search the landscape. You can look for other items. You can gather up materials. You can sit there and do whatever you want. So I am personally going to get in my ship. Well, you know what? Let's recharge my oxygen. We don't have to do that, right? Because why? We have... Oh, that's, temp that's hazard protection. Where's the other one? It's also hazard protection. Go figure. Hmm. I thought we had something that would give us that. But you know what? We gathered up 468 oxygen. Now, you remember, you can hit your X button to go ahead and recharge something using the battery icon. But you can also recharge by simply picking up the item and dropping it on there. And it'll just use whatever's needed. So with hazard protection, you can do the same thing. I don't think you can do it with food. Yeah, it won't let you. But let's say I did it with sodium. Uh, where is it? So when you pick an item up, if you don't want to use the entire amount of items, if you hit your C button on your keyboard, you'll split it in half, split it in half, split it in half, split it in half, and you can just drop it in. You notice it just jumped up a little bit when I did that. So very handy to be able to do that as well. So if you wanted to put something in your refiner and make something, but you don't want to use the entire stack, you can pick up part of the stack and drop it in. Handy for a great many things. So. Let's move some stuff around. I like to have everything in its own separate place. I put hazard protection over here. I give it a spot on either side for upgrades. Do the same thing with life support to give at least three around it. I'll leave my jet pack where it is and give two spots for it to be able to be upgraded. Usually I like to have more for them than I do for this, but that's just me. Starship, let's do the same thing. Everything's all grouped together. We do have a photon cannon for a weapon and we do have some rockets early game it's a good idea just to hang on to them but once you can upgrade and get new weapons and new technology it's probably a good idea to get rid of those your pulse engine is up to up to stuff ready to go you have a shield let's put this over here just to get it out of the way I'm gonna put the pulse engine over here for upgrades once this is repaired we can't move it while it's not repaired but once it's repaired I'll probably just move it over one we have some trit no, tritium you have to get more of this there's other items you can use but it helps to charge your pulse engine. So good idea to keep that in stock so you can keep that pulse engine charged. Multi-tool. I'm going to move things around. I'm going to put the analysis visor over here. I'm going to put scanner down here. I'll leave this where it is. Now you notice that the noise stopped. That means my refiner is done. 464. Let's put it in here. Now we need to make 50. So you see it's highlighting us telling us, hey, we need pure ferrite. Now I only need 50, so I'm going to do the C, get it down to 63. Let's lower the amount to 50. I don't want to overburden my inventory yet. Because we have a limited amount of space. That inventory can be huge in your exosuit, but for now you're limited. Let's just drop it in my exosuit. I'm going to drop this in my exosuit. This will be converted into carbon when we pick it up. So we're going to pick it up. And you notice it tells me we got 49 carbon out of it. 
And there you go. So here we are. And you notice that my carbon went up. I don't think we got 49 carbon. I think we got a lot more than that. That was weird. Very, very weird. Anyway, uh, moving on. So we got the 50. Where is it? 50. 50 pure ferrite, right? And we hit tab and we go over to our starship. We can repair it now and we complete. Here's the music. It's achieved. What is it telling us to do now? Launch systems online. All systems functional. Return to your ship. All systems functional. Seek answers among the stars. Use W to take off. So we're going to go ahead and hit the W. Now before we do, I'm going to note something here. Remember what I was saying about those ships? That all those ships were headed in this general direction, but in this area over here. So we're going to take off and go in the direction that the flag happens to be and see if we find something. Hit W to take off. Now, I don't mind this view when I'm fighting battles and I want to look at the map in the bottom of the screen of everything around me. There's your speed on the left, your ship and the shield contents on the right. If I speed up a little bit, you'll be able to see more. And your coordinates. Coordinates are very, very handy Okay, for finding things on a planet. If you discover something and can't put a marker down, write the coordinate down real quick so you can find it later. Okay, I like third-person uh, third view when flying my ship. Go here, go to your settings, utilities if you will, and one of those is switch starship view. Now before I select it, I'm going to hold my left control button down and select one. That gives me a hotkey. Get back out, and if I hit one, third person. First person, third person. First, third. Okay. So in third person, I can see more around my ship. So we're going to speed up just a little bit and head in this general direction. Now, scanning with your ship is actually better than scanning with your own visor. It recharges much, much faster. And we'll tell you if there's anything nearby. The little house right there tells us that there's something over there. Probably just a, uh, a base or something like that. Nothing special, something little. Yeah, see? I think that's actually the place we visited. But let's keep going in this general direction. We're going to keep hitting C every now and then. Looks like we have another... Probably a little something something down there. Usually just a little, yeah, like a little crash site that there's no ship at. See? Now you notice we're heading almost generally north, so we'll kind of just stick to that. Now not all locations are going to show up this way, but most of them do. Sometimes there'll be uh, like a planetary archive or other type of large structure that just simply will not show up because it's not registering as some place that they really think you need to go, I suppose. Might just be a glitch and everything. All right, anything that is small is going to be hard to find, but you'll be able to find it a little bit when you scan. You see, notice that there's a platform right there. It just didn't show up. This is great. This is actually a minor settlement is what it's called. It has a landing platform on it, so that means you're not going to use any launch fuel when you take off. Very good. And the best part is, it's got trading inside. These are handy to find. There's a couple different things you find in here. One, they always have a multi-tool weapon terminal. Check it out, just to see how much it costs. It's C-Class. It's got a lot more spaces than I have, and happens to have a supercharged slot on it. And you notice it's going to cost 1.8 million units to get it. I've got 8,700. I ain't getting this unit. And my unit is not worth enough to do any trading, so not happening anytime soon. Plus, I probably want a better one than that. I'm going to check out the encrypted na uh, navigation data. You'll get nanites, or you're going to get... They got more nanites. Or you can get a navigation data. Here's your trade terminal. We're going to sell some stuff real quick. I'm going to get rid of those vortex cubes. That'll give me about 30. Um, cobalt I need, ferrite dust I need, platinum I'm going to go ahead and sell, I don't need it, 16,000 more credits, oxygen we need, dihydrogen, sodium. I'm going to go ahead and start getting rid of these because I don't really need them anymore. So we're going to get rid of them, it doesn't give me much, but it's just not in my inventory anymore, you might as well get something from it. Okay, silver, don't need it yet. We'll keep the refiner obviously. Ionized cobalt, I can't really use anything, uh, use it for anything at this time, sell it. Everything else is useful to me and I'll keep. Now we're up to about 77,000. 
Now we can buy some stuff, so let's go back to buying and just see if there's anything we need. I don't really need this. These will come in handy later. Very expensive. I won't get any now. More ferrite dust? Well, we're gathering stuff. We have plenty of it now. Cobalt we can get if we wish. Here's other items, including metal plates, that can come in handy when you're building things. Gold we'll need later. I'm not going to get it now. Uranium is very handy. You can use that for your launch fuel. So using this in place of Starship launch fuel, see it's 64,000 for just one launch fuel to recharge one time. I can get all this uranium, 33 of it, it's only 33 mind you, but still half of that will recharge my ship. Less than half probably. So I'm going to go ahead and get it. It's 18,000, but that'll give me two charges at a, at a fraction of the cost. Very, very good to do that. And that seems to be just about all they got. They do have some phosphorus and that's handy. I don't need it right now. So we're going to save a little bit of money. So we got our navigational units. Here's some, here's some nanites. Always look for these. It's free. It's worth getting. You'll get at least 50, sometimes as much as almost 100. It's just giving me an achievement for money. See? Space trucker. Talk to this guy if you'd like to get possibly another weapon. But we'll see what he does. He flares his approach. They inhale deeply, sampling the damp, caustic smell of the toxic rain that lingers on my exosuit. They bark out what could be a warning. I hurriedly mind that I'm peaceful and know literal of their little of their kind or language. Yeah, I'm not even gonna try that. Sorry, folks. They take a second to think, then grab my multi-tool while barking again into my visor, streaking it with saliva. They point at the mining beam charge indicator, then at my backpack. I do my best to keep calm. He's obviously wanting us to charge it, so we're going to give carbon, 15 carbon. The warrior grunts in satisfaction, impressed by both my gift and my understanding. They teach me several new words of their language. So I didn't get much out of it, except I did get some words. Interloper. Interloper. Gra. So we got two extra words. We should get an achievement once we hit five. Nothing else to gather in here, you can see. But we do have a trader in here as well. He provides local stuff. For instance, uh, items and blueprints. So, components. See? Yeah, we can get a hermetic seal here. I know. Haha. -ha. Antimatter housings are handy for developing stuff for your ship, but they're also helpful in um, other upgrades that you'll need later on. You can get microprocessors here, but you see they keep a very, very limited amount of each, and it takes a while for this to recharge. You got wiring looms, very expensive. A lot of these things you won't need in early game, especially including glass, but you can get dihydrogen jelly. I try to get those because it doesn't cost much, and you do get more dihydrogen from it, so it's worth having. The rest of the stuff can hold off for now. You can also sell stuff to them. Another thing they carry, as they said before, we're being scanned by a sentinel, it looks like. Other things you can get is blueprints. These are minor upgrades. You can get a teleport receiver, you'll get that later. You can get advanced mining laser, it costs you 75 nanites, we have 167. It's handy, I'll be honest. So it's a waveform recycler for uh, viewing things through for your uh, visor. You can get a barrel ionizer for the bolt caster that we don't have. Toxic suppressor for the planet that we're on. It's a shield. Can't afford it yet. Plus we have to have a Viking rank of three. So that's why we can't really afford it. And other things that you can get through these guys. I'm not going to get any of these right now. Just going to stick with the storyline as it is. We'll get some of these things for free later. And we're pretty much done here. Now, one thing I usually recommend doing when you first develop your first base, try to make one near a minor settlement. It's very handy to have some place you can run inside real quick if you're running into issues. It's a place that you can sell rather quickly some of the minor items that you might get and, and foster and pick up some items that you can, might be able to use to build your base or other things. Um, and that guy down there has some pretty plenty of components that you can use anytime you jump back in. Plus, it gives you a landing platform to put your ship on. You, If you... Um, teleport back to your base, your ship won't land on this landing platform, it'll be out in a field somewhere, but it's still handy to come and go from here. So if you're flying here, it's great to land on the landing platform and save your thrusters. Okay, now you see that there's an arrow, which means our sentinels have finally started to show up. They usually happen after one day of playing the game. Last thing I'm going to do before we end for the day, and it looks like we're hitting about, just about shy of an hour right now, 
So I'm going to check these things out because instead of getting a hollow terminal, we're getting nanites out of this. So we're going to go ahead and gather them up. There's nothing else to gather. It does have a shield upgrade thing here. We don't need it right now. That's if our shield was damaged and we're running for our lives. Always check out the damaged machinery. You never know what you're going to get. Most of the time it's nanites. But occasionally you'll get an upgrade. This time I got Starship Launch Fuel. Yay. I think I needed that. Now you notice that this one happens to have a universal language database, so I'm going to get a word out of it. Learn a word. I learned Viking word for the. Very handy. And there's an encryption na navigation data. This time I got navigation data. That's handy for calling your ship to you. And one last thing you're going to find over here is... You know, sometimes there's stuff laying over here, but you got to save Beacon here. So this is where we're going to end for the day, folks. Save and chart. We'll proceed with the next stage of this in our next episode. Now, we're probably going to try to keep them to 30 minutes at a time. This one I wanted to get to a certain achievement point, so I had a funny feeling it was going to run a little long, but this is where we are. We still have some creatures to find. We have two more creatures to find, so I do want to get that so we can get the extra nanites from that, so we can do some more upgrades later. We do have what looks to be some sack venom over there. Can't get it yet. I need special gear to do that. Um, and some other things. And we'll go over some of the icons that you're seeing around here and what we find in those icons and how they can help us in the game as we proceed. So we're going to call it. I'm going to go back over to my ship here. In and out real fast. Restore points saved. And thank you for watching.